This is the plaza view with the Koenig sculpture. Um, this is a very iconic view, definitely one of the major views in the series. It is 30 and a half inches wide by 26 inches high, very enormous for an inclined drawing, but very typical of the time. It is ink on mylar. Uh, mylar was used when a large drawing was required because it came in larger sheets. Um, this one is quite large. It was a way of doing it without having to uh, paste together a piece of paper. So I'm back up from the view a little bit so you can get an idea how big it is. It is matted for a gallery, which means that it is not professionally matted, but it is in a flip over mat, which I will flip over and when we examine the drawing. Um, it is just really, really, really rich in color, um, which is another good thing about Mylar is that it just keeps the ink fresh forever. Um, well, not forever, but for a very long time. As you can see, there are people in the foreground, very appropriate for the time. And then um, the beautiful Koenig sculpture, which was one of the few things to survive at Ground Zero after 9-11. Um, it is a huge cast iron or bronze, I'm not sure which sculpture that was contracted for this project. Um, we see the two twin towers on either side as we are entering the plaza. Um, I don't think we can, we can barely see over here, I think. Uh, no, I'm wrong. No, we can't see the Nagara sculpture from here as we can from the other view. But um, it is a very iconic view of the plaza that would be recognizable to anyone who was there. Um, we're going to flip over the mat now so you can see the condition of the drawing. Okay, so um, it has a typical uh, discoloration of time, particularly around the edges. It's actually kind of yellow. It may not appear that way in the video, but this is white here, you can see. Um, this paper was never white but it is kind of slightly yellowed with age compared to a new sheet of vellum. So, but it is very old. Um, it has some, just here's where, <laughs> here's where the artist was probably unsticking his rotitograph, which is what was used then. You can even feel the ink on there. Um, so when they were drawing, sometimes they would gem up and an artist would do stuff like that. This is of course the number catalog number or the job number from the studio. Um, there are crop marks that were put on this, but um, the artwork itself, um, the edges are very clean. Some little folding right here, some little marks. That's actually Carlos's handwriting. I think that is, it says 41 by 48, maybe the size that he wanted the finished panel, the printed panel that he would paint to be, but that is Carlos's handwriting. Um, this is also Carlos's signature here. Uh, on the drawing. So he did sign this. Um, it, let's see, the ink line is very dense. This is very typical of Carlos's work, which is just this beautiful, look at the way that sculpture is rending, rendered. It's just an amazing, amazing, amazing cross-hatching technique that he did. Very beautiful. Um, so there's some smudging, um, some little marks here and there. Of course, there's more, again, where I think he was cleaning his pen. Um, another little blob up there. That's actually ink. Um, but here, just some marks and dirt. All of this could be handled by a good art restorer very easily. Marlar is very easy to work with. Um, this is just something beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to be displayed. It's a little fold in the paper on the edge here again, not doing anything to the image. It's a little smudge of somebody's lunch or something like that. Don't know what that is, but could be removed very easily. So really beautiful. Um, so again, that is the Koenig sculpture. Um, plaza view of the World Trade Center. Very iconic and beautiful view.